of kings and just appreciate him that rules and reigns in the affairs of men that sits upon the cycles of the earth from where he is dominating from where he has appointed you by his right hand to have dominion upon the face of the earth and upon all the works of his hands Father we are grateful for the privilege you have given us the privilege of the son of your right hand to be able to sit with Christ in the heavenly places judging all the works of darkness Father we are grateful because indeed you will help us to come into the fullness of that consolidation you have appointed for us where we can have dominion where we can be fruitful where we can multiply where we can subdue the earth Father we thank you blessed be your holy name take all the praise and all the glory it all belongs to you in Jesus mighty name we have worshipped and the people of God say let's give it up to the Lord tonight hallelujah I'm sure you can do better than that hallelujah Amen and amen. You are welcome to this hour of discovery. Hallelujah. I pray that you will discover the truth that will set you free in the name of Jesus. Please let's have a seat. We also thank you all for our online viewers. We bless God for your lives and thank God for what God is doing in your lives. Despite the seasons we are in, we are confident as he has spoken to us that is our year of consolidation. And we trust that as you continue to journey with us, this will become your reality. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. You will enter into the fullness of your consolidation. I'm confident that I will. I don't know about you, but I know you will. Hallelujah. Praise God. Ooh. It's been a journey, an interesting one at that, because looking at what God has said, and as we began to unpack it, they begin to unfold into different dimensions. Hallelujah. To remind you, earlier in the year, God said that he's doing a work in our days that you will not believe even if told. And I want you to know that God, the word of God is true, irrespective of what your present circumstances may be. If you believe him, he will do such a work in your life. In the name of Jesus. And again, he emphasized to us that that work that he wants to do will be powered by our faith and our faithfulness. We need our faith to draw down these blessings to take us into the promised land that he has promised us, to take us into our consolidation, and we need our faithfulness to sustain us there. Sustainable progress, sustainable prosperity, sustainable wealth requires our continual faithfulness. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And during our just concluded Wonder Walking World Conference, the Lord gave us a profound prophetic word from 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and Zechariah chapter 8. We have examined all the antecedents of that word. What is it that God intended to qualify us for the prophetic word? He wants us to become the aroma of Christ. He wants us to spread forth. He wants to use us to spread forth his fragrance. And we have examined what it means to be used to spread forth his fragrance. Hallelujah. And last Sunday particularly, we began to examine how to activate that prophetic word of consolidation in Zechariah chapter number 8, verse 20 to 23. And we did say to us to understand fully, uh, we know that when you take a text out of its context, my pastor will say you will have a con because it's context. Hallelujah. So when you take the text out of the context, what you have is a con. Glory to God. And Jesus wept. So, so I begin to weep. I said, the Bible says Jesus wept. If Jesus can weep, then I will weep. What is the antecedent? 
What is the context? What was the situation? What made him weep? Hallelujah. So you need to examine that before that word, that text can become relevant to you. So consequently, we began to look at Zechariah from verse, chapter 8 from verse 1 all the way to 19 to see the antecedents and to see exactly what the context of that prophetic word is. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So Zechariah chapter 8, very quickly. We read from the Amplified Bible. And I'll just give you a summary of about um, almost um, nine or ten things that we examined last Sunday. And then we will go into the first dimension of growth that God is promising us through the prophetic word he has given us. Zechariah chapter, one, chapter 8 from verse number 1. Amplified classic. And the word of the Lord of hosts came to me, saying, may the word of God come to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. You know, there is, when the Bible says God sent forth his word and it healed them and delivered them from all of their diseases, I need you to understand that all you need is a word. Hallelujah. That's what you need. A word from heaven can transform your life, can transform your business, can transform your family and generations to come after you. Just one word. And the word of the Lord of hosts came to me saying, may you receive your own word. Within this prophetic word, may God begin to speak to you expressly in the name of Jesus. Thus, says the Lord of hosts, I am jealous for Zion with great jealousy. I'm jealous for her with great wrath against her enemies. Hallelujah. When God says, I'm jealous of you, how do you feel? Amen? You feel loved. God bless you. You feel loved. A husband is jealous over his wife. And when he sees a man talking to his wife and the man is getting too close, what does he do? Please tell me. Okay, let me reverse the, all the men are looking down, they are shy. Ladies, when you see a woman getting too close to your husband for comfort, what do you do? You become jealous. So what do you do? Hallelujah. The thing will be doing you irrespective of what they are discussing. Whether it is business, whether it is official, whether they are colleagues in the office, irres- what will you be doing? The thing will be burning you. I say, which kind of Yamayama thing be this? Hallelujah. Glory to God. God says, I'm jealous for Zion with great jealousy. So God is saying, he's jealous over you. And because of his jealousy over you, don't go away. Just follow me, verse 2. He says, I am jealous for her with great wrath. So he cannot, because you are the apple of his eyes, he, when he sees something trying to come near you, what does he do? Says with great wrath against your enemies. May the Lord visit your enemies in the name of Jesus. Anyone that wants to stop your star from shining, may the Lord's wrath visit them. I say, may the wrath of the Lord visit them in the name of Jesus. He says he's jealous for you with great jealousy. I pray that you will respond with the same amount of love in the name of Jesus. When a wife is jealous over the husband, or a husband is jealous over the wife, it's because he loves her. It's because she loves him and wants to protect him. Doesn't want anything to happen to him. Doesn't want anything to happen to her. Can I have an amen? And what must you reciprocate with? He said it, love. Do you love God as much as he loves you? Let's ask ourselves. Do you really love him as much as he loves you? Do we really love God as much as he loves us? He says he's jealous over us with great jealousy. And because of that, he will visit our enemies with great wrath. Friends, this is a package and part of your consolidation. Can I have an amen? 
God is jealous over you. He's watching over you jealously, guarding over you like the apple of his eyes. And I pray that you will respond with the same quantum of love in the name of Jesus. I thought I would have a better amen. amen. Verse number three. So that's the first thing. He's jealous over you. And as a result, he will visit your enemies with his great wrath. Number two. Thus says the Lord, I shall return to Zion and we dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. And Jerusalem shall be called the faithful city of truth and the mountain of the Lord of hosts, the holy mountain. Hallelujah. In other words, maybe you have felt that God is so far away from you. He's promising you and saying, I'm returning to you. He says, I will begin to dwell in your midst like never before. Maybe you felt I was too far away from you. You said, but I'm returning back. May the Lord return to you in the name of Jesus. When Jesus was speaking to his disciples in John chapter 14, John 14, give me verse 23, verse 21, says, if any man loves me, I will love him. And then my father and I will come what? Hallelujah. The person who has my commands and keeps them, he it is who does what? Hallelujah. Whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves. So if God is jealous over us with great jealousy, and you and I have established that the only way to respond to that jealousy is through what? Through love. By loving him back. The reason why a husband, a wife is jealous over their spouse is because they love the spouse. So if God is saying, I'm jealous over you with great jealousy, and as a result, I will visit all your enemies with my great wrath in my jealousy for you. How are we to respond? You all said love. He said love which is the correct answer. We ought to respond with love. So how is that love to be manifest? John 14, 21. How is it to be manifest? Please go back to John 14. Let me lead. Hallelujah. Whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he it is that loves. So how are we to respond to the jealousy of the Lord over us? Through love, by doing what? Keeping his commandments. In other words, having his commandments and obeying. Is somebody here tonight? Is this simple enough? Because we must be able to connect the dots. If that promise will be activated, then we must keep his commandments, we must obey his word, we must have his commandments. If we want him to respond with jealousy over us, we want him to return to us. Whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he it is that loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my father and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Look at the next verse. Hallelujah. Verse 22. Judas Iscariot said to him, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world? Verse 23. Jesus answered him, if anyone loves me, he will what? Keep my word. He will obey my word. And then my father will do what? Love him. And we, who are the we? Who are the we? The father and the son will come to him and make our home with him. Through who? Through the person of the Holy Spirit. Shout hallelujah. So this is what we make God to be jealous over us. Because we love him. And we manifest that love by obeying his commandments. By keeping his word. Then we attract his jealousy. He says, I will visit your enemies in my jealousy for you with great wrath. And do you know it is so easy? 
Hallelujah. Because we are carrying God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And anyone that tries to come against you is fighting the Trinity. Shout hallelujah. It's already a lost battle. Can I have an amen? amen. Is somebody following tonight? Let's go back to Zechariah. Look at verse 3. And the word of the Lord came. Thus says the Lord, I have returned to Zion and we dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. And Jerusalem shall be called the faithful city. And the mountain of the Lord of hosts, the holy mountain. We are reading the Amplified Classic. Thank you. Glory to God. Are you connecting the dots? Because this is our discovery. You must discover this truth. I'm stepping it down for us. I shall return to Zion and we dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. And Jerusalem shall be called the faithful city of truth. The mountain of the Lord of hosts. The holy mountain. Hallelujah. May the presence of God never leave you. May his presence be more real to you like than ever before. In the name of Jesus. It took time to explain what it means to be called the city of truth. Isaiah 1, 24 to 26. Judges chapter 5, verses 6 to 9. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Okay. Verse number 4. No, just leave Isaiah. I mean, you can I won't go into all of those details. Zechariah 8, verse 4. I'm just trying to highlight the summary because we are going into the first dimension of growth today. Hallelujah. Thus says the Lord of hosts, old men and old women shall again dwell in Jerusalem and sit out in the streets, every man with his staff in his hand. Why? For very advanced age. God is saying in this season of our consolidation, there will be no untimely death. You will not die young. I say you will not die young. In the name of Jesus. A promise of old age. So old men and old women shall again dwell in our midst. With their staff in their hand because we will live old and fulfill the numbers of our years. That will be your portion. In the name of Jesus. Number four. Verse five. And the streets of the city shall be full of boys and girls playing in its streets. Hallelujah. I love this so much. Glory to God. God is saying that there will be a restoration of village life. Hallelujah. A restoration of village life where all manners of kidnapping, banditry, and the things that are chasing people away from the streets will be taken out in the name of Jesus. A restoration of village life where there is peace, where there is prosperity. In those days, nobody locks their homes. If they lock it, they will keep the key under where? Who are those of you from the village? Under the carpet. That's so with the door for village. Amen? Amen? Just keep it under the carpet or keep it by the window. How many of you know what I'm talking about? That's village life. There is no fear that somebody is going to come to break into your house. None. The streets are full of boys and girls playing in the streets. Hallelujah. Judges 5, 6 to 9, we saw how in the time of Deborah the judge, village life ceased. Like we are experiencing in Nigeria today. Village life ceased. Once upon a time, you could drive from any part of the... Night bus was the easiest thing to do. Yeah. I have a witness in the house. That's what we would take from Lagos to Abuja. 
Just go to Wuse Market, CN Okoli, enter it, 250 Naira. Hello? 250 Naira. Enter it, you sleep, you enjoy yourself, you wake up in Lagos by 5 a.m. No wahala. But now, even with armed police, with armed this, armed this, there are still skirmishes. Because village life has ceased. But we have an assurance by the prophetic word of the Lord that God will restore village life. In Nigeria, God will restore village life. In the name of Jesus, our streets shall become safe once again. In the name of Jesus. Is somebody doubting whether it is possible? Hallelujah. Do you think it's impossible? He says, I will do a work in your day. Even if you are told, you will not believe. That's why we started with that. Because some of these things look gargantuan. They are like, is this for real? But he has already given us a word of comfort. We know what was happening in the time of Habakkuk. We took time to explain it. At the beginning of the year, and he's saying, look, by the time I'm done with you, I will do such a work that even if you are told, you will not believe it. It doesn't matter what the economy is saying. It doesn't matter. There's one thing I'm confident of. God is still ruling and reigning in the affairs of men and in the affairs of nations. Can I have an amen? amen. And according to Psalm 22, verse, Psalm 22, verse 28, is the governor upon all the nations of the earth, Nigeria inclusive. Give me Psalm 22, verse 28. He's the governor of all the nations. The kingship and the kingdom are the Lord's. Do you believe that? And he's the ruler over the... He's the ruler over the nations. Nigeria inclusive. He rules over all the nations of the earth. And I'm confident of that. Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. Verse 11, quickly. Jump to verse 11. I'm looking at the promises. I think number six now. But now in this period since you began to build, I am not to the remnant of these people as in the former days says the Lord of hosts. What am I going to do? <laughs> Hallelujah. In this period, since you began to build, you are not laying back. You are not allowing the situations that are happening around. You are not allowing it to discourage you. You are pursuing your vision. Men are saying there is a casting down. You are saying there is a lifting up. Men are only looking at the glass and they say this glass is half empty, but you are saying, no, this glass is half full. Because you are looking at it from the prism of God. You are looking at it from the binoculars of God's eye. You are looking at the opportunities that are inherent in all the challenges of the season. It says, now in this period, since you began to build, I am not to the remnant of these people as in the former days, says the Lord of hosts. What will happen? Look at verse 12. There are four or five things in that singular verse. Hallelujah. For there, hallelujah, shall the seed produce peace and prosperity. May your seed produce peace. May it produce prosperity. In the name of Jesus. What is that seed you are carrying in the womb of your spirit? What is that idea that God has sown into your heart? What idea have you been toying with? You've been toying with that idea. And you're wondering, when am I going to start? There is no better time to start than now. Can I have an amen? For it says, for because you have begun to build, you have believed me, you are believing me, and you're holding on that this is my year of consolidation, my year of convergence. All the words of yesteryears, they will become my reality. He says, for there shall the seed produce peace and prosperity. Hallelujah. This year, 2024, your seed will produce peace. It will produce prosperity. 
I said it will produce peace. It will produce prosperity. Friends, it's the blessings of God that makes rich and has no... That's what he's simply saying. That the prosperity we're bringing along your way will be accompanied with his peace. Shout hallelujah. You will not have the prosperity that will take away your sleep from you. You will not have the prosperity that will take away your wife from you. You will not have the prosperity that will take away your child from you. You will not have the prosperity that will deprive you of your freedom in the name of Jesus. But that which God will do in your life, in your family, will be prosperity accompanied with his peace. In the name of Jesus. And number seven, he says, divine shall yield her fruit. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hmm. Divine shall yield her fruit. Fruitfulness. Hallelujah. I say fruitfulness is coming your way. I say fruitfulness is coming your way. Your seed will not only produce, but as it begins to produce, it will begin to be fruitful. In the name of Jesus. And number eight, it says, the ground shall give its increase. The ground will respond to you. I say it will respond to you. In the name of Jesus. I told you there are two things. Seed and the ground. The seed, any seed has life within itself. And not only does it have life within itself, the ground also has the ability to impart life into the seed. And when the seed comes in contact with the ground, what happens? The life of the seed becomes activated. Hallelujah. This year, 2024, the ground will yield an increase for you. In the name of Jesus. I say your ground will yield an increase for you. In the name of Jesus. And you know something? That's a dimension. Seed yielding prosperity. Yes, one dimension. A second dimension, divine yielding her fruit, fruitfulness. Hallelujah. And then it says the ground shall give its increase. That's another dimension. And you see the fourth dimension there, the heavens shall give their due. Hallelujah. May the blessings of God rest upon the works of your hand. In 2024, the heavens will give his due over your efforts in the name of Jesus. Friends, listen to me. If you put your seed in the ground, whether you water it or not, do you know it will bring forth? Hello? Whether you cultivate it or not, it will bring forth. It may not yield as it should. The weeds may choke it. So when you try to cultivate it and remove the weeds from time to time, then it's able to blossom. Amen? But what happens when the sun begins to shine and the heavens begins to pour its dew upon it? Abundance. 2024 will be a year of abundance for you. This prophetic word will bath abundance into your life. In the name of Jesus. The heavens shall give his deals over the works of your hand. The ground shall yield its increase unto you. In the name of Jesus. Listen, friends. Whatever business you are in, I want you to know that you need to lay hold on this word. Because no matter what the environment is, no matter how tough the environment seems, God is giving you a word that the ground will yield its increase. The ground will yield for you. I said we yield for you in the name of Jesus. When all of these factors, the seed producing prosperity, accompanied with peace, the vine yielding her fruit, the ground giving it increase, and then the rains from above pouring out is dew upon it. I want you to know that you are out for a bountiful harvest. In the name of Jesus, may the forces of nature work together for your good. In the name of Jesus, to counteract any negativity that the enemy or that the society or that the times may be bringing across your way. Hallelujah. All the forces of heaven are lined up for you. 
you have no reason to fail. And in 2024, you will not fail. Because he has said, I will do a work in your days. Even if you are told, you will not believe. Glory to God. Number nine, he says, and I will cause the remnant of these people to inherit and possess how many? How many? All these things. All of these factors, they are yours for the taking. Take them to the bank. Can I have an amen? amen? Friends, we are talking about consolidation, entering into the fullness of our consolidation. Hallelujah. Verse 13, next verse. And this is very, very interesting. And as you have been a curse and a byword among the nations, O house of Judah and house of Israel, so will I save you. And you shall be a blessing. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It says, fear not, but let your hands be strong and hardened. Have you been a source of despise? What has your life spoken over the years? Men have yapped you. I cannot but remember the story of Elizabeth. Hallelujah. Elizabeth, the mother of John the Baptist. And what's her husband's name? Zachariah. Hallelujah. In Luke chapter 1. And as we have been a curse and a byword among the nations, O house of Judah and house of Israel, so will I save you and you shall become a blessing. May that be your portion. I said, may that be your portion in the name of Jesus. Give me Luke chapter number two. I want to illustrate and show you what that means exactly. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Luke chapter number two. Verse 36. What was it we knew about Mama Eliza? Hallelujah. Glory to God. I hope you are in the right scripture. Luke chapter 1. Luke 1, verse 36. Elizabeth had been for many years without a child. Hallelujah. And we're told with her husband, they still maintained their circuit. They were still serving the Lord. Despite the fact that they were old, she has gone into menopause, she has gone into menostop, whatever it is, all these menno, menno things they are talking about, it will not be your portion. In the name of Jesus. And when God sent the angel Gabriel to appear to Mary and said to her that the power of God will come upon you and the Holy Spirit will overshadow you and you will conceive and bear a child. She said, how shall this thing? She says, it's going to be by the power of the Holy Spirit. When Mary was doubting, I want to show you that even if you have been a byword and a curse, look at verse 36. Give me, let's read from verse 35. Hallelujah. I want to show you what it means to be a byword and a curse. And behold, and the angels answered her, give me verse 34. How shall these things be? Because many, many of us were like Mary. God says, behold, I will do a work in your days. Even if you are told, you will not believe. And Mary said to the angel, how will this be since I am a virgin? How will it be? I haven't been into business before. Now you are saying, you are giving me this idea and you are saying, go and start now. How will these things be? Lord, this idea is too compelling. Nobody has ever done this thing. How will this be? God says, the power of God. The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called 
holy, the Son of God. Look at verse 36. The Holy Spirit in trying to convince Mary. Behold your relative. In her old age, has also conceived a son. How many of you know that it's easy, it, it became so easy for Mary? She knew Auntie Eliza. Before she was born, Auntie Eliza has been ministering to the Lord with her husband. Can I have an amen? She grew up to know Auntie Eliza. And the angel of God confirmed the rumor mill about Auntie Eliza. Behold, your relative Elizabeth in her old age, she has also conceived a... And this is the sixth month with her, who was called... What was Elizabeth called? What was her nickname? Eh? What was her nickname? Madame Barren. She was called Barren. Where was she called Barren? Was it in heaven? Here on earth. But yet heaven recognized it. Heaven knows the names life has called you. Heaven knows the names society has given you. Heaven knows the appellates that men have given you. Heaven knows what your colleagues have tagged you to be. Heaven knows. He knows. It's a she that was called barren. Behold, she's also with age, with child in her old age. Shout hallelujah. Go back to Zechariah for me, chapter 8. I'm illustrating to you what it means to be a byword and a curse. Hallelujah. Verse 13. And as we have been a curse and a byword among the nations, that's what it means to be a byword. They have despised you. They have given you a name that is not yours. I illustrated on Sunday. Maybe you are Mr. Jobless, no job. And when everybody's going out, what do they do? They come and leave the key. Say, oh my, my cousin, you know that my sister, she was coming. And when she comes, I beg, help me give her a key. Then the other one is going, say, I beg, my picking. If you come back from school around 12, help me tell her, say, I don't put in lunch. It's because you are Mr. Jobless. You have become a byword and a curse among the nations. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And as you have been a cause and a byword among the nations, O house of Judah and house of Israel, so will I save you, and you shall be a blessing. Is somebody here tonight? God says you will be a blessing. It doesn't matter what men may have called you, you will become a blessing. They may have called you Mr. Jobless, but you are going to be jobful. In the name of Jesus. It doesn't matter what society has labeled you. Elizabeth was called barren, and heaven took notice of it. Heaven knows what, they are like, what life has given, the name life has given you. Heaven knows what you are going through. You just must learn to rest in the Lord and put your trust and your confidence in him. Somebody says, you don't know what I'm going through. I don't need to know I'm not God. Can I have an amen? But your God knows what you are going through. Don't flaunt that and use that to blackmail me. Pastor, you don't know what I'm going through. Do you know what I am going through? But there is one that knows what all of us are going through. Shout hallelujah. He's the one we have to turn our face to at all times. He knows what you are going through. He knows what I'm going through. He knows what we are going through corporately. He knows what you are going through as a family. Hallelujah. But he says, as you have been a curse and a byword among the nations, so will I save you. And you shall be a blessing. I say in 2024, you'll be a blessing. Amen. There will be a reversal of your fortune Amen. for the better in the name of Jesus. Amen. It's our year of consolidation and every word that God has spoken over the years, they will become your reality. Amen. I said they will become your reality Amen. in the name of Jesus. And you shall be a blessing. It says fear not, but let your hands be strong and hardened. Hallelujah. The major issue is fear. The opposite of faith is fear. The problem with many of us is fear. Tomorrow we'll be dismantling, we'll be looking at the faith clinic tomorrow, 4 p.m., the mechanics of faith. The mechanics and the dynamics of faith. Those things why our faith, why we are not able to hold on to our faith. The reason why our faith is not able to walk 
He has said it's our year of consolidation powered by our faith and our faithfulness. Your pastor's faith cannot save you. Can I have an amen? amen. It says, even if Noah was there, and who? Job. And who was the third folk? And Daniel. It says, even if they were there, their righteousness will only be able to save them themselves. This year is you and your faith. Can I have an amen? amen? I can agree with you and believe God with you, but you must first believe. You must first believe. But what causes us not to believe is fear. It's the opposite of faith. It will nullify. It will short circuit your faith. Fear not. Let your hands be strong and hardened. In the face of opposition, are you afraid or you have faith? Glory to God. Verse 14. For thus says, that's, I don't have, I've lost count now. For thus says the Lord of hosts, as I thought, to bring calamity upon you when your fathers provoked me to wrath, says the Lord of hosts. And I did not relent or revoke your sentence. But he says, I am now determined. I have purpose. Hallelujah. He says, look, during the times of your father, I told them I would destroy them. And I didn't change my mind. I did not relent. I went on with the full punishment I said I would give them. So again, have I purposed in these days, to do good to you and to your household, Amen. to do good to your family, Amen. to do good to your business. He has purpose in his heart and he says, fear not. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Again, I have purposed. The NIV says, I have determined. He has determined to do you good. And when God makes up his mind to do you good, I want you to know that he will do it. In Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you. They are thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you a future and a hope. He has determined to do you good. Can I have an amen? amen. This prophetic word that he has given us, look at the context. And then we cap it up with the various dimensions. And I told you four dimensions. We have seen that again here. Hallelujah. It says, fear not. For again, have I purposed to do you good in these days. In 2024, God says, I have purposed, I'm determined to do you good. Are you excited about that? There's nothing that can go against his purpose for your life as long as you believe. Glory to God. Shout hallelujah. He gave us some scriptures. Jeremiah 29, 11, 31, 28. Jeremiah 32, 42 to 44. Hallelujah. Now go to verse 16. Zechariah 8, 16. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And then he gave us some salient conditions to observe. These are the things that you shall do. Can I have an amen? Speak every man the truth with his stop speaking with double mouth with your neighbor number two it says render the truth and pronounce the judgment of verdict that makes for peace in your courts at your gates hallelujah because of our time give it to me in the message 16 and 17 in the message thank you Lord Jesus these are the things you must do. Now, here's what I want you to do. Number one, tell the truth. The whole, when you not half truth, half truth is lies. Hallelujah. Tell the truth and the whole truth when you speak. Do the right thing by one another, both personally and in your, personally and in your business, there's nothing like business lie. You know, you know it's, it's business truth. And in business, you have to, no, don't color coat it. Hallelujah. Don't cook up plans, verse 17, to take unfair advantage of others. Unfair advantage. Somebody say, Pastor, won't we make profit? We will. 
but don't take unfair advantage of others. Don't do or say what is not so. Hallelujah. I hate all this stuff. Keep your lives simple and keep it simple. Keep it simple and honest. It says, I hate that stuff. Don't do or say what is not so. You know you don't mean it and you are saying it. God says, these things will short circuit your consolidation. Tell the truth, the whole truth when you speak. And let the devil be, as we normally say as children. But these days, do we even care whether the devil will be ashamed or not? Hallelujah. Somebody was leading prayers some months ago, early morning prayer meeting. He said, even the devil, I think it was brought daughter. He says, even the devil, we say, ah, ah, no, this one you are saying. Hallelujah. There are some lies you will lie. Even the devil will say, even though I'm the father of lies, but I disown you. Say, I disown you. This lie, I disown you. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Here is what I want you to do. Tell the truth, the whole truth, when you speak. Do the right thing by one another, both personally and in your courts, in your marketplaces. Don't cook up plans to take unfair advantage of others. Don't plot evil. Don't plot somebody's downfall. Don't set up minds before somebody else. It won't get you nowhere. Can I have an amen? amen. There is more than enough. He's the big-breasted God. There is more than enough for everybody. The Yoruba folklore says the skies are opened. All the birds in the firmament, billions as they are, they will fly there. Their wings won't even touch. Can I have an amen? You can be in the same business on the same street, our shops may be beside one another. Don't plot or cook evil against your neighbor. Can I have an amen? amen? You have your customers, she has her customers. Can I have an amen? There's nothing you can do about it. And this is where I salute my brothers from the east. They will take a line. They are all selling spare parts. Shout hallelujah. They will take a line. They are all selling plumbing. Because they understand the principles of God. Somebody will enter this shop and prize it. As he's coming out, there's a scout there. He's following the man. When the man is saying 20,000, as the man comes out, he says, oh boy, come. May I take you to my shop? And he follows him. He enters his shop. He's, if you see it and like it, you buy it. He's not going to buy just because of price alone. There is the, what is called the anointing. Hallelujah. The anointing that is able to draw. Glory to God. Even when you are selling it for hire, the man will look and say, I like you. Now you are one to buy from. Glory to God. Don't cook up plans to take unfair advantage of others. God says, I hate all that stuff. Shout hallelujah. Can I have a big amen? Can I have a bigger amen? Can I have a bigger amen? Give me verse 17 back in the Amplified Classic. Verse 17. Don't take unfair advantage, but let me show you what the Amplified Classic says. Amplified Classic. Let none of you think or imagine or devise evil or injury in your hearts against his neighbor. That's what I want to emphasize. In your heart. You may not say it out, but it may be in your heart. Hallelujah. It says, let none of you think or imagine or devise evil. Or you may not devise it. Hallelujah. You may not plot it. You may not go and loosen his tire as he's traveling. You may not send your boy to go and loosen his tire, but you have imagined it in your heart. And God says, don't do that. Hallelujah. Let none of you think. Don't even think about it. Don't think evil against your neighbor. For whatever reason, for whatever it is they have done. I asked you that question before I asked you. Some of you, you wished your bosses, the way he has mesmerized you, the way he has met, as if they go house, make you no know rich house. You have thought of it in your evil, in your heart. 
Hello? Am I correct? Some of you say, as this guy, they go make a no rich house. Ah, how did they do this guy? You're already guilty. Says, Let none of you think or imagine or devise evil or injury in your hearts against your neighbor. And love no false oath. For all these things I, says the Lord. Hallelujah. He has said, vengeance is mine. Hand it over to him. Say, let's pray for those who despitefully use us. What kind of prayer? Thank God for their lives. Lord, touch my boss's life. Let him meet with Jesus. When he meets with you, we know how best to behave to you. But never you think or imagine or devise evil or injury in your hearts against your neighbor. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. All these things God hates. I hate all that stuff, says the Lord. Shout hallelujah. Verse 18, very quickly. And the word of the Lord of hosts came to me saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the fast of the fourth month, the fast of the fifth, the fast of the seventh, and the fast of the tenth shall be to the house of Judah times of joy and gladness and cheerful appointed seasons. Hallelujah. Therefore, in order that this may happen to you as the condition of fulfilling the promise, love, truth, and Hallelujah. Love truth. Love peace. Glory to God. And what was it, was he referring to by that verse 19, by fast? Give it to me in the New Living Translation. Verse 19. This is what the Lord of Heaven's army says. The traditional fast and times of mourning that you have kept in early summer, midsummer, autumn, Winter, they are now ended. Hallelujah. I say they are ended. Your mornings are ended. Your season of sorrow is ended. In the name of Jesus. The fast of the fifth month, the sorrows of the seventh month, of the ninth month, of the tenth month, God says they are ended. I say they are ended. Those days of loneliness are over. You are lonely yet surrounded by men and women, by friends and families. Yet your heart is lonely. He says, your times and days of loneliness are ended. I say they are ended in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. They will become what? Festivals of joy and celebration for the people of Judah. So love truth and peace. Shout hallelujah. I declare to you that your days of lamentations are over. Your nights of loneliness, I say they are over. Your days of lamentation are over. The days of your unfulfilled dreams and desires, they are over. In the name of Jesus, God is converting them to festivals of joy, festivals of celebration. Celebration galore will be your portion. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. If you believe it, shout amen. amen. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. <laughs> hallelujah. Friends, these are about 12 or even 14 things that we can see that are preceding even these dimensions God is talking about. We keep seeing conditions, conditions for the fulfillment of the promise. Love peace, love truth, love me. And to love him, obey his commandments, keep his commandments. His prophetic utterances, God's word always has conditions attached to them. When we fulfill those conditions, the answers come like a piece of bread. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. We are not even able to get into the first dimension today, but I trust God that Zechariah is making more meaning to you. I trust God that you are understanding the antecedents 
Because, friends, these four dimensions must be yours. I said they must be yours. In the name of Jesus. And I'm trusting God that none of you, that we will compare notes at the end of this year because none of you will fall short of God's expectation. In the name of Jesus. It doesn't matter what the season is saying. He has said, the days of your mourning are over. They have ended last night. Today is a new day. In the name of Jesus. Let's rise up on our feet. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I wanted to pray for yourself. I just wanted to pray for yourself. You know the areas where the rain is beating you. You look at all of those conditions. Are you nurturing evil or imagining evil or thinking evil in your heart towards your neighbor? What are you doing? I want you to look up to God and say, Lord, help me. Help me. These words are many. These words are keen. These words are massive. Help me, Lord. I don't want to fall short of your expectations. Help me to bring myself into alignment with your word. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. You have determined to do good to me. Yes. You have said even though I've been a cause and a byword in time past. No. You have purpose and determined to do me good. Father, let nothing hinder me. Let nothing stop me. I will not allow faith, fear to stop me. I will not allow fear to stop me. You said, fear not. But let my hand be strong and hardened. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. I refuse to be anxious. I refuse to be anxious. I refuse to allow the present situation and circumstances of the country to short-circuit my faith. I refuse. I refuse to be afraid. I will not be afraid. But I will trust in you. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I refuse to be afraid. I refuse to be afraid. I will hold on to my faith. Yes, my faith will become strong. In the name of Jesus. You have purpose. You have determined to do me good. To do my household's good. To do my household's good. You have to do my household's good. For you have said, you know the thoughts that you think towards me. Thoughts of good and not of evil. To give me a future. To give me a hope. There is a hope in my future. And there is a future in my hope. Father, thank you. I need your help. I need your help. Help me. Help me, Lord, to do the right thing by one another, both personally. You said I should tell the truth, the whole truth when I speak. Help me to do the right thing, to do the right thing personally, in my business, in my marketplaces. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. That nothing will hinder this word in my life. That nothing will hinder this prophetic word from coming to pass in my life. I will refuse to cook up plans. I refuse to cook up plans to take unfair advantage of others. I will not do or say what is not so. Yes, Lord, because you hate that stuff, I also will hate it. I will keep my life simple and honest. Help me to keep my life simple and honest. In the name of Jesus. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Zendarabo Shekaturiababa. Kalarabo sefataria mako senkataria mashikataya. Mezendoro pako zekataya bo laraba. Leria baba sekata. Lift your voice and call upon God. And ask God to help you. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. To speak the truth. To speak the truth at all times. Help us, Lord. Re kapo sekata. To do the right thing by one another. Help us, Lord, never to do or say what is not so. Help us, Lord, to keep our lives simple and honest. Help us, Lord. Thank you, Father. We give you praise and glory. 
Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. And the people of God say, let's put our hands together for Jesus. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. We'll continue by the grace of God on Sunday. And we trust God to take us into these dimensions of growth that he has promised us in the prophetic word he has given us in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. According to our apostolic tradition, we'll take your questions and then we will take our offerings and be drawing the curtain tonight. Hallelujah. Did you gain something new? Do you understand better what God is saying? Hallelujah. Okay, so we take your questions. Who wants to bail the cat? Glory to God. Anyone wants to bail the cat? Go ahead. My friend, give my friend a microphone. Chimese, right? Chimere. So uh, I want to get something from that verse 14 to 15 of Zechariah chapter 8. Yep. So it, it will be in connection with what you said that um, God's thought for us is not of good. It's not of evil, but of, of good. So I, I want to find out the, the afflictions and challenges that we face here in mortality. I want to know, is it actually part of God's plan? The, the touch of afflictions that we have in our lives, is it part of God's plan? Or uh, does it mean that the, the affliction comes as a result of our unfaithfulness, as you are talking about? Or, uh, I don't know, just can you, can you answer? I know you have the answer. Can you answer it? Answer to the question? Yes. Not really. You don't? Okay. Let's put our hands together for him. Who wants to help us? Somebody should help to answer that question says the afflictions we go through are they part of the package? Right? Are they part of the curriculum? Are they part of it? Yes? Okay. This way. I think they have because uh, the Bible made us understand um, the person that we're supposed to follow, Jesus Christ, the Bible says he learned obedience by the things that he suffered. Hebrews 5, 8. Yeah, so um, sometimes the things that we go through, um, the perspective, if we don't have the mind of God to think the way that he wanted, he want us to think about it through, we can't it. And the Bible also says that um, our, our problem is a light affliction. So whatever we are going through, we may see it as a difficulties. But it's going to land in a better place. And also, I think it was in James 1 that says, can't it all joy when you fall into diverse temptation, knowing the testing. Other interpretation says, the trying of your faith must produce something. So my answer to you is that whatever you are going through, what has it produced in you? Has it strengthened your faith or has it weakened your faith? Has it made you, has it draw you closer to God or it has taken you back to where you are? You have gone back somewhere else to go and look for solution. And you know what? It will produce. So my question and my answer to you will be like, when you walk through these difficulties, the first thing is that don't begin to say, God, what have I done? Lord, what are you teaching me? What are you going to accomplish? What is this for? And if you stay longer there, it's going to tell you. Amen. And though you may go through them, it may not... Most of the things that make us who we are, they are not the things that we like. That's the right. things that we like doesn't last. It, do, it never lasts. 
So um, that's my own way of answering the question. Let's put our hands together for her. Thank you. Senate President, you are raising your hand. I just want to add to what our sister said. Yes. Um, it's just for you, the affliction you are going through. Firstly, you must know that is not true sin or any other thing. Because in the book of Philippians, it says, it's not only to believe, but to suffer uh, in Christ. So, whatever affliction you are going through, make sure it's not as a result of sin. If it's not, then you should prepare your mind. As you are believing, you'll be going through trials. And trials of life will make sure that you are more proven and you are more more of Christ's character is formed on the inside of you through suffering in Amen. Christ. Amen. Let's put our hands together for her. Yep. Praise the Lord. Put on the screen Hebrews 5 8, 2 Corinthians chapter 4 17. Yep. Praise the Lord. I have this passage to read for me. Um, John chapter 16, verse uh, 33. He said, I have told you all this so that you might have peace in me. Here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrow. But take heart because I have overcome the world for you. Amen. Uh, I just want to add to what he said because I believe his question based on how can God say that my thoughts my thought towards you is not of good. I mean, it's not of evil, but of good. And some Christians are still passing through some difficult situation. And I want to tell them that, okay, look, definitely on earth, we will pass through some difficulties and challenges. But we must keep faith in God and make sure that we do not disobey him and keep his commandment that you have said and his word. He said, come unto me, in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, he said, come unto me, all ye that labor and never landed, I will give rest. So in Christ, we have all the peace. Sometimes you might feel that challenge. But when you trust God and continue to move in faith and do your own work, by trusting him, definitely you will pass through that time. It will come. Like David said, I walk through this valley of shadow of death. I fear no evil because he trusts the Lord. So by the time you replace that fear of the things that you are facing and trust the Lord, then you begin to have faith in God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. So, uh, the first scripture, Hebrews 5, 8. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he... Can we read it together? Hallelujah. So, suffering will produce what? And if Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who needed to learn obedience through suffering. I don't think the less is expected of us. Amen? Also, James 1, James 1, 2. I just want to summarize all the various points. James 1, 2. Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of... Chimere, are you listening? When you meet trials of various... Verse 3 various kinds of trials. You know that the testing of your faith produces what? Steadfastness. Next. And let steadfastness have its full that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in. Give it to me in the NIV, verses 2 to 4. Let 2 to 4. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, Whenever you face trials of many kinds, not just one kind, many, financial, marital, many, because you know that the testing of your faith produces what? Perseverance. So those trials are a test of your faith. Then let perseverance finish its work. Amen? So that you may be mature and complete, not lacking. Hallelujah so that you may be mature. What matures and completes us and not, so that we will not lack anything are those trials of various kinds. Can I have an amen? amen. Second Corinthians 2, 2 Corinthians 2, verse 17. 
trying to weave a string among all of the things that were said. Second Corinthians chapter two, chapter four, pardon me, four verse seventeen. Four seventeen. For this light momentary affliction, right, is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all. Hallelujah. These light afflictions, they are momentary. They are just for a while. And it's preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. And then the next verse says, For why we look not at the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient. We heard that. The things we are seeing, they are temporary. But the things that are unseen are eternal. Hallelujah. Then, John 16, 33. John 16, 33. Chimere, I hope you are writing down these scriptures. They are for you. I have said these things to you, that in me you have what? You may have peace. In the world you will have what? But take heart. I have overcome the world. Hallelujah. And let me add an icing to it. Psalm 119, verse 67. Psalm 119, verse 67. And also... The work of afflictions are many. Before I was afflicted, I went, but now, hallelujah, praise God forevermore. Amen? Before I was afflicted, I went, but now I keep your, so when we go astray, what are some of the tools God uses to bring us back? Afflictions. You are going on that path of evil. And God knows that if you continue on that path, he doesn't want to lose you. So we allow the afflictions and the blows to come. So as to jolt you back to your senses and then you come back. Can I have an amen? Praise God forevermore. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. Thank you. Okay, any other question? We'll take one more. Okay, Senate President. Give me verse 71. Sorry, ma'am. Verse 71. The same Psalm 119. It's a counterpart scripture to 67. It is good for me that I was... Is it a bad thing to be afflicted? Let's finish it. That I might what? It's good for me that I was afflicted, that I might learn your statutes. Amen. Yes, ma'am. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You, when you were preaching, you said something that we should say, tell the whole truth. But at times, I find out that people differ. Some people, you tell them the whole truth, they bring up fights with it. And the same Bible says, when your brother have something against you, your sacrifice will not be accepted, you reconcile. And in the book, in Proverbs 9, 7, it said, when you speak to a scoffer or to a mocker, you are just wasting your time. To a wicked person, you are just wasting your time. So at this point of these two sets of people, it's only a wise person you speak to. But when you were preaching, you said we should always say the truth at all times. Because with the work of, God, with the work of Christ, I feel that some situation, you just have to hold your peace. And it's not that you don't want to speak the whole truth. Because you know if you speak the whole truth, I don't know. <laughs> More problem. Hallelujah. And I don't want um, any of my sacrifice not to be accepted. Beautiful. So we have to find a balance. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. Please put Proverbs 9, 7, and 8. Okay, so let me yield the floor. Please answer 
Who wants to help us to answer the question? The issues are these. Number one, when you speak the truth, okay, let's first read the scripture. Whoever corrects a scoffer gets himself abused. And he who reproves a wicked man in chaos, praise God. So let's settle it. Senate President, give me the NIV. Whoever does what? Corrects. Right? And whoever rebukes. Whoever corrects. And whoever rebukes in chaos abuse. Do not rebuke mockers or they will hate you. Rebuke the wise and they will... This is not about telling the truth. This is talking about rebuke. This has nothing to do with you. You see a mocker, Kukwe, and the man, if you go and put your mouth, he will abuse you, right? This is different from a situation that you are in that has to do with you. When it has to do with you, God demands that we speak the truth and let the devil be ashamed. Praise the Lord. It's got to do with you. So, I, you know, we started this service by saying we must look at the context of a text. When you take the text out of the context, you have a con, right? So, whoever corrects, this has nothing to do with you, right? But if you rebuke the wicked, they will incur abuse. So, why don't you keep your peace and be going gently? But when it has to do with you, your transaction with somebody... God demands that we say the truth and let the devil be ashamed. Can I have an amen? amen? So that's very important. And I think that is where the issue is. Anything that has to do with us, amen, God demands that we say the whole truth. Amen? Now, the area I will also go is that how you say the truth matters. Praise the Lord. Are you saying it with love? Because Pele, Olako, Olabo, there's a way you say the truth that the Bible says a soft answer turns away wrath. There's a way you express the truth. Somebody's angry. Why did you do this to me? Why did you do this? You allow the person to finish. I didn't do that. This is exactly what happened. Number one, you have taken away the steam out of that person. That anger, he has to calm down. But the person is charging at you. Why did you do this? And husband and wife, typical scenario. And then you two are saying, what do you mean? That's not what that's... You know a fight we start. But the Bible has balanced this. It says a soft answer turns away wrath. So I need us to understand these two contexts when we are addressing this issue. It doesn't take away the fact that we must say the truth. Hallelujah. Many times, our challenge is um, we look at people's faces before we give answers. And the Bible has said to us that we should not look at the people's faces. If you look at Jeremiah chapter 1, towards verse 18, give it to us. You know, God has balanced the Bible for us. And if we walk in the whole counsel of God's word, we will see that we will never be stuck. Hallelujah. Uh, When we are dealing with those, uh praise God. Um, Today I've made you a fortified city, an iron pillar and a bronze wall to stand against the whole land, against the kings. Yes, next verse. They will fight against you, but will not overcome you. Fine with you and will rescue. Next verse, 20. No, I think it's the earlier verses. Anyway, where I'm going is this. You see, the mechanics of the word of God is such that it is balanced. But you must ensure that you follow the total counsel of God. It's 18, right? 8. Oh, Jeremiah 1, 8. Put Jeremiah 1, 8 for us. Don't be afraid of them. I'm with you. And I will what? I will rescue you, declares the Lord. The issue majorly with people is that 
when we look at people's faces to deal or to speak, or then we will introduce mechanics within the system that will make us, that will model up situation. Right? Um, if we are ready to simply say the truth that we know, without allowing anybody's ox to be God. And like I did say, how you say it, Jesus says, take heed what you hear and how you hear. It's in the same manner. The way you speak matters a lot. You know, but you don't have to tell a lie that you will now be repenting for, you know, in your bedroom. Lord, I'm sorry that I had to say a lie there. Just say it as it is. But the only way we can create that balance is the softness of our answer. You know, a soft answer will turn away wrath, no matter what the situation is. When you speak and allow, many times, most of the quarrels between husband and wives that takes place is because of lack of patience. And the Bible balances it. It says, he that hears a word and judges a matter, look, you will make error. If I hear something about you, and the judges also says, you know, do you know that it's the first person to speak that always wins the vote of everybody? Right? Because the man has gone, he has said it, and who will say the word and will not say it to favor him or her. But a wise leader, you must hear all parties before you make your judgment. Shout hallelujah. Let's dissolve our emotions from it. Let's not allow emotions to rule us, not to be able to speak the truth at all times. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. In business, it is worse because in business, when you tell a lie, you need 10 other lies to cover it up. Believe you me. But the truth is constant. If you say the truth, when they wake you up in 20 years' time, is the truth you continue to say. But the moment you make a lie once or you speak a lie, you need 10 other lies to cover it up. Because by the time it now comes from another direction, you've forgotten that you said the truth. Your head is calculating. So let me use another one to shock it. By the time you get to the third time, you've already told two lies. You need five more to cover it up. Hallelujah. His grace will be sufficient for us in Jesus' name. Have we helped a little? Okay, let me take from Edward first. And then we take Madam Charis. And then... No, I just want to just uh, talk to the Senate President. Sometimes you just keep quiet. <laughs> just keep quiet. Amen. Because I have a boss, and the boss said, I'm the aide to the boss. And he said, I don't want to see anybody. You can never tell that visitor that, Oga say no one see you. So you choose to have a cover story. So Oga don't go up. Actually, he's upstairs now. <laughs> so is that a, it's not a lie now. He has gone up. But I didn't say, because you can't tell the minister coming to see the president and you tell him Oga say you don't want to see again. So you're causing more problem. So sometimes you just tell him, oh, Oga is up. Oga is up somewhere. Or oh, you keep quiet. I think that is what I just have to let her know. Instead of thinking of lies. Cover story sometimes works. Hallelujah. Okay. <laughs> oh, you yeah, are working for men in high places. They put you in situations. One thing um, that I'm realizing, and these are things that comes with, um, sometimes it comes with maturity and also come with age. Truth in itself is very, very bitter. Let's be, let's be frank and let's be sincere about it. There are some of us that we can't even take the truth, but we like to tell other people the truth. And so, when you are telling the truth, like Pastor have already said, and the tone with which we say it, um, always uh, turn it around and say, if I'm spoken to in that way, how will I feel? Especially when you are the boss when you have the authority over that person you know you can wield it the way that you like and i'm going to use this example when we left nigeria Speak, we can't hear you when we left nigeria for canada and uh, we started a business you know when i was in nigeria when i when i when i walk into my in my office i'm like the lion of the tribe of judah you know i tell them everybody's like running around you know when i got a brother they say oh can we i want to uh, these are people that i give job to I want to have a, uh, what's it called, a smoking, whatever. So when they would come in, come in, I'm not coming to work tomorrow. I said, what happened? I said, oh, Raptor play, and they had an uh, over something. I didn't sleep until two, and I'm not coming. 
and there are rules. You can't just sack uh, somebody and say, because he didn't work, come to work. You know, Nigeria, you can fire, you can everything. Like, eh? I'm in trouble here. Yeah. And you know, there's nothing you can do. So I began to look at me, myself. And I began to look at this new place that I've come into. And I'm like, what's happening? What's happening? I'm like, when I will come back sometime when they come, I said, oh, Kimi, it's like you're not happy today. I said, well, I'm not happy because you just did not turn up because if I have to hire somebody, I'm going to pay much more. But I can't fire him because he told me I'm not coming because I watch television till 2 a.m. and I'm tired, I'm not coming. Can you tell your boss in Nigeria that? <laughs> Who born you? Who born you? But you cannot fire that person. If you fire that person and it takes you to arbitration, he will continue to stay at home and you continue to pay him until it is settled. So, these are some of the things that it doesn't come easy. It comes with age. It comes with maturity. Especially people that you are over. That you know what? Um, because you, are, you give that person employment. Does not give you that power to talk down and to do that. You know what? You have rules. You have regulations. Say, so, okay, you did this. You did this. According to our rules and regulations, this, 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 and whatever is going to happen. But I want to say sincerely, truth is always bitter. And because of the bitter, because you look at that person in the face and you are saying you have been placed on a scale and you are found to be out of balance. And so how do you communicate out, that, out, of, the, uh, out of that balance? It has to be in love. And like uh, Brother Edward also said, there are sometimes you just have to move past it. Because the Bible says when we are dead in our trespasses and in the unforgiveness of our hearts, Christ already paid, you know, he overlooked it. So, as we mature, there are some things that we really need to overlook and just uh, be the big brother. Thank you. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. Thank you for that uh, international perspective. Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. We must learn to speak the truth in love. In love. In love. His grace will be sufficient for us in Jesus' name. And let me end with an anecdote. Aye Koto. The world does not like the truth. That's the truth. And I will round it up with another anecdote. Olo Tolu, Oni Otalu, the man that is the truth that is dwelling in the city of truth is the enemy of the world. The world will never like you if you are somebody that says the truth. Praise God. The world does not like truth. They crucify the truth. Jesus. So it's not going to be different. Hallelujah. May God's grace be sufficient for us in the name of Jesus. The world does not like truth, but you, as a child of God that is spirit-filled, must tap into the grace of heaven to learn to speak the truth in love. That is what will make the difference. Is grace being sufficient for us in Jesus' name. Let's rise up on our feet tonight. Thank you so much for your various contributions. Let's put our hands together for every one of ourselves. Hallelujah.